formation lap commencing. Formation lap commencing. So as the cars head out on the formation lap, let's take you through the Fuso starting grid for 2012. Davison and Johnny McIntyre on pole position. Jamie Wincup, three-time champ with Paul Dumbrell. There's the young Kiwi. Gee, he's popular here. Luke Yulden is with Shane Van Gisbergen. Mark Winterbottom has another double winner with him, Stephen Richards. Fabian Coulthard, terrific job this weekend with David Bernard. Garth Tander and Nick Perkett, our defending Bathurst champions for the Holden Racing Team from position six. Tim Slade, the youngster, has Andrew Thompson with him for Lucky Seven Racing. David Reynolds and Dean Canto. David will be starting that car. He was a bundle of nerves when Neil Crompton spoke to him. Craig Lowndes has handed over the starting duties to Warren Luff for car 888. Steve Owen and Paul Morris, as we've said, the most experienced combination up here. 32 starts combined. John O'Webb, Scott McLaughlin on debut. Scott, Jason Bright and Andrew Jones. Tireless campaigners for Team BOC. Count them in as your Smokies. Rick Kelly with David Russell for Jack Daniels Racing. Position 13. There's James Courtney and Cam McConville for car 22. 15 and 16 goes to car 4 and car 34. Lee Holdsworth and Craig Baird with Michael Caruso and Greg Ritter for Fujitsu Racing next to them. James Moffat has the true blue colours on this weekend, paying homage to Stevie Johnson's dad in car 17. Amazing, they'll line up side by side on the start grid. Todd Kelly and Tim Blanchard. This will be Todd's last race in a Holden Commodore. He won't make the rest of the year because of shoulder surgery. He'll be in a Nissan next year. Positions 21 and 22 go to David Wall and Chris Pitha and Greg Murphy, four-time Bathurst champion with Owen Kelly. He is a rock-solid driver. Tony D'Alberto and Dale Wood for Team High Flex with Russell Engel and Christian Clean looking to make some noise for their sponsors and the sponsors at this great event, Super Cheap Auto. Techno Auto Sports, two entries of course, car 91, Michael Petruzzi docked five spots from qualifying for holding up Jason Bright. So he qualified 20th, but car 91 will start from 25th. And then Taz Douglas and Scotty Pye for Team I select, Carl Reinler and Daniel Gordon. And then the rear of the grid, Cameron Waters will start in car 23. When he hands over to Jesse Dixon, we'll be watching because Jesse is 18 years of age, won the Shannons competition to be part of this race, youngest ever combination to uh, compete in the Bathurst 1000. Yeah, green flag, green, green flag. This is it. 50 years in the making. And here at Mount Panorama, the legend now continues. Will Davison gets a good start, but Paul Dumbrell has outpaced him. And Dumbrell is going to go side by side with his mate into turn one. Dumbrell hung out wide at Hell Corner. They're still battling it as they take it up to Mountain Straight. Shane Van Gisbergen tucks in behind them. This is going to be interesting at turn two. Who will yield? Who will want to push? Who will take the lead at the great race? After just two turns, Davison, the pole sitter, on the outside. Doug Brown on the inside in the championship leading car. It's a good place to be on the outside at two, but it makes an ideal positioning now on the run of the cutting. And so down the inside goes Will Davison. Dumbrell left room high and wide in turn one, just in case he was there to avoid contact. But that's a nice move, a decisive move early by Will Davison. Well done. That was very brave. Around the outside of turn two was not a normal spot to be. And he got it done. He was on the inside for the cutting. And he's pressing on in the first lap. The best start of all the top ten guys was Fabian Coulthard. He got a ripping start. He's in fourth spot behind Van Gisbergen. Top of the mountain, McPhillamy Park. Oh, over Skyline. 225 k's on approach up here before the mountain falls away through the S's. Remember, they've got cold tyres, they've got cold brakes, they've got a full fuel load. They've got to be very careful on this first lap. So rolling out of the throttle with the bottom. And listen to that. That's a, that's a tyre flailing. That's yeah, something... It's a tyre gone. It's a tyre gone. A He's going to have to come in. He doesn't need to do another lap. That's Winter Bottom in. So a tyre fail for Winter Bottom. And we were riding with it. We heard it. We heard the belt come unglued. Are they ready? Are they ready? Prepare for a driver change. Prepare for a driver change. Cool tyres in. Helmet hose. Disconnect your cool suit. Disconnect your cool suit. Loosen your belt. 
Radio and drink store. Oh, and a problem here for 91. So John Reed, Johnny Reed in the car at the moment. He's pulling up on the left side of the road here, coming out of the cutting. No, no one home, mate. No one home. So uh, there is a little seat just down there to the right where Thank that you, second no, flag no, is. There's a little do. gap in the track there. They could roll it backwards and get it out, but this will probably trigger the safety car. Watch this move from Warren Luff on Luke Yildon. This is as easy and as clean as you're going to get. Not easy, but as clean as you're going to get at turn two. Remember, for Warren, the car's substantially lighter. He came in on lap 10 for that tyre set. So he's done 14 or 15 laps, although there's been a couple in there that have been under the safety car. So uh, all those that he's racing at the moment have got tyres that probably start uh, still quite up to, to uh, their optimal pressure. A bit of a lock up there. Is that getting all crossed up down there in the braking area? That was a bit awkward. David Bernard is having real trouble stopping there in the lock entry. And in fact, now that's Andrew Jones, his teammate, all over him. And the great view from above and the chopper just shows you how dirty it was down the inside. Now watch Wind Cup in car one here as well, because he's the guy that's got the kilometres of this little pod of three cars. And uh, Jones oh. up the inside. He's got it done. So David Bernard sidesteps him, gives him some space, and uh, Wind Cup buys in as well. Stephen Richards is going to go with this. Have a look at the momentum he's got. He got a good clean run and he's got the toe. And David Bernard he just needs to pull in behind Wing Cup now. It'll end up costing both parties time. So Jamie drops in. It's benefited Stephen. And Andrew Jones is clear. Bernard in the car in front. Mark Dutton we spoke to him on the starting grid. He's just advising. Jamie, the important information there, who you're racing. Got to get the run now. The only way to do this is to get it done cleanly before the kink, or you have to pull out of it. He's going to have to lift out of it, and then down the left-hand side if he can get down there. Ooh, a bit of a late move, but he got it done. Well done. And David Bernard also well done. Richard. Steve Richards off the road. He was in the dirt there, yep. so Stephen tried to go with him, couldn't do it. There would have been a little bit of aero disturbance on the front of his car. I think it's hit the fence so hard. He was already wide. And then he's gone straight ahead now, bang. He's and that's hit the wheel so hard that it's actually, it doesn't look, the tire's still inflated, but it's actually pushed the hub right down. Watch this. So that was Andrew Jones and David Bernard taking avoiding action right at the peak. Oh, there you go. Huge failure now of the front right-hand suspension. They'd be struggling to get that car back. What a disaster. So at the front of the field now is Dean Canto in car 52. Zero in on John McIntyre. Behind him is Jamie Winker. Story of the day. Tires, tires, tires. Here we go. This is Lowndes up the inside of Yugi. And Luke did a good job too. He didn't turn down on him. Let's go down to pit lane and check in. Oh! Well, let's not because Paul Morris in car 49 has major, major damage. Steve Owen. Could be behind the wheel here. This car has just come through in pit lane. This is turn two, and they boards sort of flag safety car hold to get our car off. Uh, they did a brake change close to the edge of the circuit at turn two. It hasn't stopped. It hasn't got any front brake. It's locked the rear. So we've that, seen this over the years. Oh, that's so it's gone hit. in hard. That is a big one, Neil. That's just locked the rears, didn't it? As soon as he put his foot on the brake, it was gone. And, uh, oh, look oh, at this. McIntyre. He's gone straight ahead at one. Remember all that pressure that he was under as well. And the safety car boards are being shown. So the Peters STP safety car is going to go out. So it's all going on. So I think it was Steve Owen that actually got in when Paul got out. He's gone up there. He hasn't had enough. Uh, he's had enough. Hasn't had enough brake retardation, and it's fired in hard. Watch this. The rear's locked. This never looked like stopping now. It's almost like it's popped a piston out. Yeah, mate. Fortunately, it's not as bad as last year's incident. And uh, oh, and, that's, okay, and so. that's the McIntyre runoff down the escape road. Now he can't spin it, so he's lost a lot of time. Did a good job to get reverse. This is at turn one, at Hell Corner. So he runs down right next to our host position there. He backs it back, does a good job to get it back there. Now those that we've had focus on earlier in the race, we just look at here now as well. So Lowndes, who's been there or thereabouts all day, he is 12th. 
and Will Davison with Rakelli watching there on the wall. Will is 20th in car number six, and that's as a result of what happened for John McIntyre going off here at turn one, getting back on, getting back in the queue, but down the order, then getting caught up in all the pit lane traffic. So that really burned him. He just got a glimpse of him in the back of the queue there. He'll have a dive down here now. He's close enough in the slipstream. Great pair just ahead. This is where we saw that big incident. And he runs a little bit wide. Dave Reynolds is also trying to capitalise. He's on the outside for the kink here, so this will be interesting. He has to just back out of it. Pulls in behind Baird and down the inside. A big dive. I reckon they made contact. Wow, that was close. Courtney had to come back out of that in a real hurry. It's quite ordinary there because uh, when you come round there, you've got huge speed. So he's tried to stay with the throttle, and then actually he's picked the brake up. So lucky not to cloud that wall. Safety car in mid lane. And this is a very important restart, Matt, because it's Dumbrell versus McConville. Richards, Ritter, Kando, Kanto. That's the top five. Garth Taylor just getting out of the way. How's the effort from James Courtney and Kevin McConville from 14 at the start of this race, now up to second? This is a, uh, an interesting period of the race now to focus very carefully on because by not bringing in Carmine, it was last in on lap 81, and uh, we're on lap 96, 5, I should say. Um, you look at Canto, for example, in car 52 in position 5, they did bring that car in. So that means that they'll have less fuel to stick in a little bit later. Yeah. And that'll give them a, a, a very handy advantage to play. 14 seconds will be that margin. So this will, uh, and he hasn't lost a lot of track position is where I'm getting to with it. So if you look where car 52 is, and there he is there. Cando and Reynolds are in a very good position here at the moment. Now, the thing that you can never be 100% Oh, so, oh, trouble back in the cutting with one of the FPR cars has been turned around there. I just caught a glimpse of it. Oh, car number six with Johnny McIntyre in it. I just saw it rotating in the background. Did he get help or did he do it on his own? And it's never good to be pointing the wrong way there. Oh. And he can't turn it around. Look at this. Lee Holdsworth versus Tony Dalberto up Mountain Straight. And Rick Kelly is going to buy into this argument as well. So three abreast heading towards turn two. Up over the rise. Something's got to give. And it will be car three. Oh, trouble here for car number eight. This is a drama for Team BOC, and Andrew Jones is off. We understand he's popped a tyre. Safety car board, hey, mate. Flag, safety car board. Yeah. Flag, we have a now, you've got to think about the implications of this strategically. David Reynolds has come out in position number two by the calculations that you were doing, Prompo. They should have been at the, at the front of the field, given the fact that they only had to stay in much, much less time. And I can just tell you that Dean Cano has, has tweeted straight away as soon as he got out of the car, no courtesy in the pits on that stop. We should have rejoined in P1. So according to that by Dino, they've been brought somewhere along yeah, the way. As soon, as soon as I saw him come out behind car one, I knew something happened. But there's a lot of congestion in the lane and all that's going on. And the theory is one thing, but the reality is another because, it, you know, you have all the software in the world that predicts what can happen, but it doesn't take into account the realities of the congestion in the lane. So it's Wing Cup versus Reynolds at the front. But it has put him back in touch. That's the point. So he's back in this game now. Oh, Will Davison, when it ain't your day, it ain't your day. He's 16th. That's an off at the chase. OK, mate. Uh, try and get it to the lane if you can. If you can. Oh, very right slow. rear. Be very careful. Oh, he's busted the watts linkage in the rear of that car. How's this? That is so fast. Fabian Coulthard was the one in the Lockwood car. That is so... Oh, and it finally hit the fence. That is amazing. That He's had a lose What's here. This? this is gone now. Feeding gears. Lucky it didn't roll. So this is for the final spot of the podium. Caruso versus Courtney. A couple of Sydney boys. A couple of Commodore drivers, a couple of Walkinshaw engines, and JC's in the gap for third. He gets it done and puts the Holden Racing team up onto the podium. Now, can he hunt down Reynolds? And has he got enough fuel to get it home? Remember, 
22 stopped on lap 135. One on 134 and 52 also on 134. So Courtney went a lap further. He might have the green light a little bit earlier to go for it. Paul Dumbrell, a very nervous man. He's got Casey Stoner on his left. That's Dean Cano, top left of screen, and Cameron McConville, bottom left. All major players in the final session of this race, and the finish that we were expecting is starting to brew because James Courtney in car 22 has got past Michael Caruso. So Courtney is in third, Reynolds in second, Jamie Wincup in first, and Courtney's flying. Last year, we completed this race with two guys neck and neck. This year, it could well be four or more. Here's the pass for James Courtney up the inside of turn two. Michael Caruso says he's got too much push, too much understeer in the car. It isn't responding to his turning input. And a problem here also, whacking the wall pretty hard for the Johnson car, the Jim Beam car, whacking the exit wall. Now, look at this. There's nothing between them. The two lead cars came in on lap 134. However, Courtney came in one lap later. That's a four and a half litre difference. He's not compromised by fuel at the moment. And you can add Craig Lowndes to that equation, who's sixth. He came in on lap 135. He's flying. But the guy who's got blistering pace at the moment is Shane Van Gisbergen. Fastest lap of the race. Two minutes, 9.5. He's 14th and he's blazing through the field. Five and a half hours of racing, 21 laps to go. Nothing in it at the front. Wincup and Reynolds are just being reined in by their engineers at the moment. They haven't been allowed to cut loose and use the fuel that they've got. They're still in a bit of cons uh, conservation mode. Different story for James Courtney, and that's the reason why he's edging closer and closer to car 52. And that's going to be a problem for Davey. He's got the worst job here at the moment. Jamie's got the benefit of clean, fresh air. He can pick his line. Clearly, Courtney's got the eyes on. And he's not compromised by fuel trim. And Reynolds has got it going in all directions. And here comes Courtney down the inside. Puts a move on and makes it stick for P2 when it counts. The Holden Racing Team. They won it here last year with Garth Tander and Nick Perkat. And now... The job of defending that title has shifted over to car 22 and James Courtney and Cam McConville. He does need to make the move. Otherwise, he's going to invite Caruso to the party. That's a better run. That's James Small, driver counsellor. This is the move. Move it out. This is wild. This is wild. And he gets it done. Well done. That's a very, very brave move. 300 kilometres an hour. This is big commitment here because when you turn in here from the shallow line, it makes the corner that much harder. Look at the bottom. Isn't this fantastic? We're fans of Davey. He's a wild little character and he races well. A lot of people have asked the question, is he fast enough? He's got the pace. It's great to see another guy emerging in the top ranks in this business. Tander's out of phase here. He's the one on the right. Don't worry about him. He's down the order. But that next little battle's pretty serious as well. Here it is. This is the battle for third, fourth, fifth. Garth, again, very professionally moves over, lets the next three guys by. And that's a healthy battle for the last step on the podium as Louds right up now behind Caruso. And Mark Dutton now tells Dave Reynolds that he says to Jamie Wickup that Dave Reynolds has been told to go. He's also told him, mate, you can do it, which you've got to have that level of positivity. So Lowndes has a look on the outside of Michael Caruso to try and get him on the inside as they head up the hill towards the cutting. Caruso right out on the left, now pushes across to block on the right. Lowndes wants to fire back. This is for fourth spot. James Courtney's in front of them. You see how Craig can position the car pretty much where he likes at the moment. He's able to underturn Michael. He's clearly got some chassis speed there at the moment. He's applying it well. We know his car's been getting better as it sheds fuel load. 
Here's the battle up the front, meantime. Two big battles going on. One for the top spot on the podium, one for the last spot on the podium. But Dave Reynolds had a big tank slapper off the oh, back of that, just like that in the previous lap. That's where he's losing to Winker. You've got to get off the dipper better than that because you've got to be closer at Forest Elbow. This is the spot that he can pass him, but he's got to be within a car length coming on to Conrad straight. It's too far back. So this is close. He had to move it. He had to move it over. And we know that they were stressing about it from almost the first flying lap on this tank load. So it's six seconds from first to third, but Lowndes is beginning to apply big pressure now to James Courtney. This is mega. A battle for first and a battle for third. Lowndes is only three tenths of a second away from the rear of car 22. You'll see it right here. So that's for third spot in this race. He's going to have a look at the final turn. On the inside, Lowndes oh, will oh, take the position, but can Chris he hold it? And he does hold it. Craig Lowndes goes up to third. So he had to lock it up. He had to back it into the final corner. Cross up, sliding, wheel stop. And Lowndes has come through from nowhere to be third in this motor race. Can never discount him, can you? He is an unbelievable competitor. And a great pass for the final step of the podium. And this is on. Dave Reynolds right behind Winker. Well, now he's super close, Scafie. Up through the cutting. So the top of the mountain is where Dave needs to do his best work. If he's going to be able to put pressure, like you say, at the dipper and then at Forest Elbow, if not through the chase of Jamie Winker. He's close. It's better. It's yeah. better. He's much closer this time. He's actually a threat now. He's punching, punching, punching David Reynolds. It's an unbelievable fight to the death here between these two. There's nothing in it. Reynolds hasn't blinked. Winker hasn't blinked. Their maximum attack over the top of the hill. This is the spot. He's got to be better here. Oh, big slide. He's, he's trying so hard off there, he knows it. The go car just won't do it. Go go the home fans and the Ford fans are polarised. They're cheering their men. Go, Jamie. Go, Davey. So, big conserve the word from Mark Dutton. And at the same time, James Small saying they're conserving, mate. Get him, get him, get him. Now we're getting a little here, mate. So, he's sucking air in that car. Sucking air. Thanks, Marco. He's got nothing left in the tank, Jamie Winkup, but he's got one lap to complete. This is extraordinary if he can hold it off. That means they've done it to the millimetre. It's going to happen again. Two years in a row, we've got this ridiculously tight margin between two cars. We've all got sweaty pumps. There's 6,200 metres remaining in this car race. And what a way to finish the current Ford versus Holden era of V8 supercars at the mountain. This is a Commodore against a Falcon going for the Peter Brock Trophy. Less than six kilometres left in this one. James Small is egging his driver on. This is extraordinary. This is the grand prize for a V8 supercar driver, for a, any Australian in motorsport. Davey looks up the inside at two. They're both completely grip limited. There's nothing left from either men here. Three quarters of a lap remaining, and now they do the mountain for the very last time. Six hours and 15 minutes of racing. Absolutely nothing left in the tank for Jamie Winker. He will cough and splutter his way across the line if he has to. David Reynolds going for his first ever V8 supercar win. They've told Jamie to go trim two down Conrod, use more fuel, whatever's there, just use it. So Mark Dutton's urging, James Small is urging, there's nothing in it. It's millimetres at the top of the hill. It's win cut by a whisker at the moment from Reynolds. And this is it, go for broke time for Reynolds. He's got to fire it down the inside of the, at Forest Elbow, just fire it down there. Come on, Davey, win it or bin it. Gets a little bit wide yet again. Mark Dutton jumps back on the radio to telegraph another message to Jamie Winker, who has yet again put through an extraordinary drive. Under such enormous pressure, what has Reynolds got left in the tank? Has he got enough? Is he close enough to make a move on our championship leader? For the second year in a row, this guy 
fires right down to the final turn. They're both brilliant. Oh, big, oh! Slide, big slide for Win Cup. He just barely hung on to a thing. They've both done a remarkable job. Only seven drivers have won four or more Bathurst Championships. Today, Jamie Win Cup joins the greats. He gets his fourth. Oh. Paul Dungrell gets his first. And David Reynolds on the podium. A whisker away from victory in a classic 2012 race. And Craig Lowndes, of course, is always there at the end. Unbelievable. What a stunning performance by both those young men. Dave Reynolds put the ultimate pressure on the best operator in this business. A Ford and Holden classic. 0.3 oh. a second. David Reynolds, well done. Jamie Wincup, well done. Both deserving champions today. And Craig Lowndes, as I said before, from nowhere to make it one and three for Team Vodafone on this podium. Thank you so much, fellas. So six hours and 16 minutes was the official race time. 19 cars on the lead lap. That equals the 2010 and 2011 race record. So there's your podium. Cars 1, 52 and 888. James Courtney and Cam McConville oh so close to yet another podium finish. Comes the party celebration. Dumbrell and Wing Cup. <laughs> and you know where they're going. Straight up to the top. So Jamie Winkup claims his fourth Bathurst crown and Paul Dumbrell becomes the 53rd different driver to win the race in the 50 year history of the super cheap auto Bathurst 1000. The finishing margin between Winkup and David Reynolds, the second closest between competitive cars in the race's history.